Hi, my name's Danny, and I'm here to tell you today how I successfully bonded my two female rabbits, Luna and Peanut. The reason that I'm sharing this video with you is because in the course of trying to bond them together, we've had several setbacks and a lot of ups and downs, which I think a lot of rabbit owners can relate to when trying to make that lifelong bond. In fact, we had a setback in the middle of trying to bond these two, which we'll get to in a little while, that was so bad that our vet and a local RSPCA shelter suggested that we choose our least favourite rabbit and ask them to be rehomed. Now, as a pet owner, I'm sure that you can imagine just how much of a complete no option that was. We had to find a solution, and I'm proud to say that after a lot of hard work, we eventually did achieve that. If you're feeling in a similar situation, I hope that this video can help you find your way through what you're trying to achieve and to get some successful results. We bought our girls from the same place when they were around two months old and they lived happily together free roaming in our house until their hormones started to kick in around the four month mark. Unfortunately at that point we had to separate them and they had to live in different uh, enclosures although still next door to each other until they had put on enough weight and were old enough to be spayed. They were spayed just before Christmas in 2009 and afterwards we successfully bonded them back together again and they lived happily free roaming in our house. However, around nine months old, we noticed that suddenly there was a few issues. As you can see in this video, they were quite hyperactive in the evening and they would run around binking and hopping all over each other. Unfortunately, occasionally that meant that one of them would land on the other and when that happened, there were suddenly scuffles and fighting breaking out and it looked like their bond wasn't as strong as it had been previously. We didn't know what to do about that, um, but one day I came home and there was so much fur and fluff all over the place that we decided that they had to be separated. Even though they were still happy in themselves, even though they were still um, happy and lively rabbits, Unfortunately, we just couldn't risk them free roaming together when their bond was unstable and they were left alone to free roam while we were at work. Up until this time, we had had success with the bunny dating method, where we pop the bunnies into a neutral space, uh, usually the bathtub, for a short amount of time each day. We started off with around 10 to 15 minute sessions and then slowly built up to an hour. However, at this point, their bond was broken to such an extent that the bunny dating method was no longer working. Basically, each time we popped them back together, it was as if they had never been with each other at all, and the same level of scuffling and fighting would break out. So we realised that this wasn't going to suit us at this time, and we had to think of something else. Once their bond was broken, we couldn't free roam them anymore. So instead, we had to set them up in two enclosures next to each other where they could still see and smell each other. Unfortunately, a lot of anger and rattling the bars and stomping would break out if one of the bunnies spotted the other one out roaming. So we had to instead operate on a evenings only routine where they would come out in the evenings one at a time to get some runaround time after we were home from work. We left them like that until July 2020 when we decided that they were showing enough positive signs that we were able to start bonding them together again. We'd found that all of the aggressive behaviour had stopped and they'd started lying next to each other through the bars of their pen. We thought that was a good enough sign and we decided to bond them once more. However, this time we weren't going to try the bunny dating method and so instead in July we started the 24-7 method. For those of you not familiar with what 24-7 bonding is, it's basically what it says on the tin. Instead of putting them together for short dates, you put them together in a small space and then leave them together entirely supervised 100% of the time, um, increasing the space as you see the bad behaviours stopping and the positive signs beginning to show themselves. Positive signs that you're looking for include mutual grooming, where both bunnies will groom each other, sharing of food and also um, being able to lie down, flop and relax next to each other. Expanding the space meant that the grooming stopped and as an inexperienced bonder I thought that this was a huge problem. As it happens it probably wasn't and if I had left it a little bit longer then I'm sure it would have resolved itself in time. But instead, what I did was I popped some banana on the heads of the bunnies to encourage some mutual grooming. Now, in and of itself, that's not a terrible idea. 
But what you must make sure is that the bunnies are also grooming each other when there is no food treat involved. If they're only grooming each other when there's a fruity snack at the end of it, then that isn't a bond, it's just dinner. After a day and a half of watching them full time, it was all good in the bunny box. Lots of kisses and snuggles. So we decided to expand to a small exercise pen. Over the next few days, we expanded until we got to day five. Unfortunately, this was where it all went wrong. By day five, my husband and I were completely exhausted. I think we had both underestimated the toll it would take on us to sit up and supervise them 24 seven. We were in a relatively good place. There wasn't a lot of fighting or scuffling going on anymore, but Luna had become strangely possessive of the water bowl. She would lie across the middle of the pen, as you saw in the image, and any time that Peanut made a move towards the water bowl, she would lunge at her and try and stop her drinking. Now we resolved that at the time by hand feeding uh, peanut water from a water bottle rather than a bowl. Um, but in reality, we should have reduced the space and made the space much, much smaller until that behavior stopped. We weren't to know, but now I'm sharing it with you so that you do. Unfortunately, on day five, completely exhausted, um, we decided that it would be okay to just step away for half an hour to grab some lunch together. Um, the bunnies were asleep and nothing had been going on. It was the middle of the day, so it was a time where they were usually quite rested. Um, but unfortunately, we went downstairs and we were only gone for perhaps half an hour. But we heard this sudden scuffling noise and in the time it took us to run from the kitchen to upstairs, a big injury had been caused to Peanut's face. Peanut's injury required surgery. And it was at this point that our vet and a local wildlife advisor suggested that we might have to stop trying to bond Luna and Peanut together, that perhaps they were just not meant to be and we should consider rehoming one of them. That just wasn't an option for us, but we knew that we now had to wait until Peanut's wound had healed and we'd seen some really good progress and signs that they were ready to try again. We moved them back to separate enclosures and three months later, in October 2020, they were beginning to show signs that they were perhaps ready for one last final attempt. Meanwhile, desperate for this final attempt to succeed, I had read every book and blog that I could lay my hands on. We started our final attempt by popping them together and taking them on a car ride, just to freak them out enough to get them to huddle together for security. They're not really doing anything. They're just sort of sitting here. After all that worrying about what would happen when we put them together again. So I was like, oh no, you know, that's fine. This is it. We'll just get on. And strangely, this time, just get on, they did. I don't know whether it was because they were older or whether it was because I was more informed and was therefore calmer and knew more what I was doing. But this time the bonding went pretty much without a hitch. We followed all the steps we had done before. But this time I took my time and spent a lot more time at each stage. One of the things that had caused problems previously was trying to decide who was dominant. When they were babies, Peanut was in charge. The last time we attempted to bond them, Luna was in charge. This time we weren't sure which way it was going to go and so what we were waiting for was Peanut's stubbornness so that she would groom Luna in return. So it's now 1.30am and as you can see it is Kissy Central up here. Um, Peanut is definitely asleep but that is not stopping Luna giving her a very thorough face wash. So um, yeah, everything here is going really, really well. I'm really impressed and surprised. It's now 20 to three and the bunnies have been in their box for almost 12 hours. Um, but I haven't seen any naughty behavior. I haven't had to intervene a single time. So I'm going to try and get some sleep next to them. Um, and I've got my gloves here just in case, but hopefully um, they'll sleep and so will I. Let's see. Good night. The 
the move to the cage, as suspected, did cause a little bit of aggravation, um, but nothing huge. And we were able to successfully put in both a litter tray and a water bottle without it causing any fights. If you are stuck at this stage, consider removing the litter tray and water bowl and just giving them water um, in a handheld bottle once every half an hour so that there's nothing for them to be territorial over. But if you are in a good place and there's not any territorial behaviour, by all means try adding these things at that point. What we can see here is Luna clearly asking Peanut to groom her head and Peanut absolutely ignoring her. Luna's still making a play to be dominant and whilst Peanut continues to refuse to recognise that, Unfortunately, we would be stuck at this stage, waiting for Peanut to submit. I mean, she's clearly not afraid. Yeah. She's having a nap. It took all day, but finally Peanut gave in and started to groom Luna. This was a brilliant sign, because this was where we had got stuck before. And from then on, they both relaxed a lot. Over the next few hours, we saw them lying down, flopping, and cuddling with each other. It was a really positive sign. Oh, that space. You two choose to sleep in the litter tray together. With the scuffles dying down, I decided to sleep next to them at the end of day two, in the hope of being able to be well rested for the rest of the week. By day three, we had hoped to be able to expand the space again. But unfortunately, in spite of the positive signs on day two, Peanut was now deciding to be stubborn once again. Um, what you could see was repeated requests from Luna for grooming, where she would shove her head underneath the head of Peanut and Peanut just stubbornly refusing. This went on pretty much all day. Um, and unfortunately, Peanut was just not prepared to give in. So once again, it was a case of waiting. Yeah. But this is the stage that we're going to be stuck at until Peanut caves and licks Luna's head. Many hours later. By the end of day three, Luna was being groomed by Peanut pretty much any time that she asked for it, and there was mutual grooming going backwards and forwards. Because we had been patient and given them time to sort it out, we still hadn't have had to actually intervene to break up any fights, unlike last time. I think this proved to me that patience really was the key to being successful in our bonding attempts. Alright, it is Friday, day five. And this is the size of area that we've expanded to now. Um, we've only just expanded, so we've seen quite a lot of chasing. Um, and it's still slightly weird. Luna will ask for grooming from Peanut, and then when she doesn't get it, she grooms Peanut instead. So although we're pretty sure Luna's in charge, um, they haven't quite worked out how that's going to work in their relationship yet. So... We're hoping that by expanding the space a little bit, it will sort of force the issue and make things come to a head, but we shall see. Often when people talk about 24-7 bonding, the only thing they talk about is increasing the space. But actually, I haven't found that to be particularly helpful advice because there's so much more to it than that. Instead of thinking about just increasing the space, what I would suggest is thinking about moving from a low value environment to a high value environment. Now what that will mean will change depending on your bunnies. But what I'm saying is if they can exist in a really big space, but only when there's no toys and none of their favorite stuff there, then that isn't really going to solve your problems. So when you think that you've got to a good place and you've been able to expand the space a bit, the next time you think, okay, I haven't seen any bad behavior, instead of just automatically expanding the space, see if you can mix things up a bit by adding in some toys that they find more high value. So for example, you can see in this that I've added in their willow bed. That is one of the favorite things that they both really liked. And before we started bonding them, they would both rub their chins on it and claim it as their own. So adding it into the space, was about testing can they still share when there are items in there that they both really like and as you can see from the footage they absolutely can the addition of the bed didn't change 
how they behaved with each other. And we were still seeing lots of positive grooming and snuggling. Later that same night, Luna found a fun new game that involved burying herself underneath a blanket and turning herself into a sock rabbit, which I just thought was so cute. And although it has nothing to do with their bonding, too funny not to share. On day eight, with things going so well, I decided to raise the value once again by adding in their all-time favourite toys, a tunnel and a cardboard box house. Now, this was added into the same size of space that they were already in, um, but since it didn't provoke any fighting or any territorial behaviour, I then later on expanded and increased the space. So they now had high-value toys and more space, the aim still being to see whether with the increases and the changes, it would prompt any fighting or arguments. Overnight between days eight and nine, unfortunately the amount of chasing increased. And although it hadn't turned into any fights, I thought that the safest thing to do would be to just pop them back into a buddy timeout by giving them a day in the box. The other really good thing about that was that it meant it gave me a day to catch up on some sleep and be able to move them around the house with me. And I think it's important to remember that whilst you're bonding your bunnies, looking after yourself is equally important. Um, whilst they were in the pen, I had to sit in the room with them. Once they were in the box, I could take them with me, which was especially important as my husband had now returned to work. So I was doing it by myself. The timeout day proved to be a huge hit. And by the evening of day 10, when they were back in the pen, they were showing that they were on perfectly good terms again, so much so that they were willing to share either end of a toilet roll tube, which I thought was very, very cute, very Lady in the Tramp, and really showed how far they had come in their bond um, and how well they were getting on compared to how they were only 10 days before. I was really surprised and pleased because you'd never believe that these were the same rabbits that a few months ago we were being told we should rehome one of them because they'd never be friends. By day 11, with the bunnies now sharing high value food as well as high value toys, it was time to move on from active bonding where they're supervised 24 seven to leaving them to cement their bond. Basically, that means leaving them alone to give them time to make sure that their bond is really strong and secure before you move them to their new home. You must not skip this step if you want their bond to survive being moved back into what was previously one of the bunny's territories. While the bunnies were cementing their bond upstairs, I got to work building them their new enclosure under the staircase. Previously, prior to bonding, both bunnies had lived in small exercise pens underneath the staircase, so it was really important that when they returned, neither bunny started claiming that new space as their own territory. Most people, of course, don't have the option of completely transforming their rabbit enclosure after bonding, so here are a few tips if you are returning them to a space that was previously owned by just one bunny. Number one, as you've seen in this video, Try and introduce high value or favorite toys and pieces of bunny furniture into the bonding and cementing process. Let them get used to sharing whilst they're building their bond. Number two, wipe down anything like furniture or toys that can't be introduced during the bonding process with white vinegar to remove any territorial scent rubbings or smells from when it belonged to just one bunny. Number three, if they are free roaming or house bunnies and they live in a few rooms of the house, introduce the new rooms of the house in the same way that you increased space during the bonding process. 
start with just their bedtime or enclosed area and slowly open up more areas of the house, saving those areas which are their bunny's favourites till last. And finally, number four, if they're free roaming and they've got a particular piece of human furniture that they like more than any other, try moving it out of their environment or rearranging the furniture in that room to make it as unfamiliar as possible before introducing them both back into the final new space. And that's it, the story of how we ended up successfully bonding Peanut and Luna. I hope that this video has been useful for you and that you are able to see some of my mistakes and then stop making them yourself. The basics can be summed up as go as slow as possible and move from an area of small, low value to a big, high value space. Good luck and happy bonding. Yay.